Hello guys. Okay, I'm going to go through the quick and dirty way to animate to get your homework done. And then I'm going to go back and make a separate video that will show you a few extra cool things. Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, here goes the quick and dirty 3D modeling of a gear. Really fast, pretty easy, you can always go back and rewind. So I'm going to use the marking menus again like I always do. Poly cylinder, <clears throat> drag out a cylinder, hit the 5 key, and over here in the inputs I'm going to click on poly cylinder 1, change subdivision caps to 2, just to give myself something to play with inside of there. Again, I don't expect you to make the exact same gear. I would hope that you would actually make other gears. You can make one of these, just as practice, but uh, I would hope that you would experiment and make all kinds of other gears. Okay, so in face mode, I'm going to select the outer rim, and you know, of course, double checking that I don't have anything else selected. I'm going to select the outer rim, I'm going to shift right click, extrude face, and tug it out on the Z. And now notice that it just extrudes everything out uh, together. It's all it's all sewn together as it extrudes. In order to change that, we want to turn uh, turn it from keep faces together. And we want to uncheck that box, and that is going to be if you were in the polygons menu. To change that up here, if you're in the polygons menu, edit mesh, keep faces together. Turning that off would uh, would change that. However, if you do it up there, you have to redo your extrude. Um, of course, you guys know how I like my mark marking menu, so marking menu during the extrude operation, control and shift key, right click, and then toggle keep faces together. So control, shift, toggle keep faces together. You can just go back and forth and decide which way you want it. Um, then with the extrude still going, I can then taper it in using the scale. And if I want, I can taper it this way as well, make it extra cool and just decide how long I want the teeth. Cool. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the gear can be called done right there. If you want to chop out the middle, you can, but don't get caught up in the 3D modeling process because this is an animation exercise, not a modeling exercise. So I'm going to leave it like this for now, for the quick and dirty way. Uh, I'll come back to it later when we get to uh, showing you the fancier stuff in the next video, but for now I don't want you guys to get carried away with 3D modeling. All right. So, we need to learn how to animate. Quick and dirty. Change in time, change in value. Those are the two essential things needed for animation, right? Change in time, change in value. Your time slider is down here. It's this top bar here. I've, you'll notice I've hidden a lot of my UI. Uh, there's a lot of bars and windows and things that you guys have that I don't have. I've just minimized or hidden all of the, the things you don't need to see so that you're left with just the uh, essential things. Okay, so uh, the time slider right here. You can click on the time uh, on a frame. These are the frame numbers. You can click on a frame just to jump to it. You can click and drag if you want to scrub. Um, and then down here we have the range slider. The range slider is what you use to zoom in the timeline. Zoom in, zoom out on the timeline. If you want to isolate a portion of the timeline to work on, you can just Let's say I want to work on frame frame 11 to frame 34. Those are, those are the keyframes that I really want to focus on at the moment. I can just zoom into that set of keyframes and then manipulate those and scrub back and forth or just look at my entire timeline all at once. Now you'll notice that when I scrub, uh, drag this around, these numbers to the left and right of that bar update. Uh, that should be fairly obvious. It's the, uh, the outer, and again, if you mouse over them, a lot of times they'll show you what they are. The, the outer numbers, this number and this number, the outer numbers represent the entire timeline. So if I go over here and change this to 300, you'll notice it gives me a whole lot more frames to play with. If I need to extend time to give myself more time to move around. Um, 300 just happens to be a uh, generic random number that I throw in there pretty often just to give myself more room to play with because 48 frames is the default and that doesn't tend to be a whole lot of time. Uh, so anyway, so I, I usually jump this out to 300, but you know, I might actually scoot this uh, zoom in around because I, I, you know, I want to focus on the, the chunk of animation I'm working with at the moment. 
Another critical thing that you need to change uh, to make sure that this is playing back at the proper speed is over here down to the very bottom right corner um, there is a button called animation preferences it's right next to this little key click click the button and it drop drops you right into your animate your uh, time slider preferences this is the same window we've gone to multiple times before window settings preferences preferences it's that same window it just jumps you right to the time slider options which is uh, really important for, for when you're animating what you want to do, I, I personally like to keep this at play every frame. That's because I do a lot of particle effects and simulations, so I, I need it to be able to evaluate every frame. But max playback speed, this is the important thing. Change this to real time instead of free. It defaults to free in Maya, and basically it just lets Maya crank out the animation as fast as it wants without, without slowing it down to real time. So make sure Maya is slowing it down to real time it's not going to be super super accurate it might actually go slower than real time if you have a really dense scene but uh, it's it's the best approximation of what the speed of the animation will be at least until you output it to a game engine or into uh, into a play blast alright so change that to real time hit save now while we animate we know that it's going to move at the appropriate speeds um, so first of all quick and dirty uh, the S key is your friend if you're doing the quick and dirty. S key, bam, sets a keyframe. You notice my channel box lights up red and you notice it puts a little red hash mark down there on the timeline. Obviously where the hash mark is, is a keyframe. Um, the lighting up red up here is just letting me know that I have keyframes on that channel. Um, so quick and dirty, I set a keyframe. I, I choose a, uh, a spot, let's say, uh, let's say 60 frames. I go, I move 60 frames, uh, I then want to rotate it, and again, you could use this, uh, the rotate manipulator if you want. As, as I move the rotate manipulator, you'll notice the channel box values update. If I want to, quick and dirty, I could just like spin it with a manipulator, hit S, it sets a keyframe. But of course, I want this to spin a full 360. So in order to spin it 360, I'm going to just type in that value up here in the channel box. Now I can uh, now I can hit S. Uh, I'm going to de I'm going to deselect the the number field first because if I hit S up here, it's just going to put an S there, and that just doesn't really help anybody. So I'm going to type in 360, hit Enter, but then I'm going to click click off of that uh, value before I hit S. Anyway, but now what I've done, I already had a keyframe there because I should I was demonstrating something a minute ago. So I already had a keyframe, but when I hit S, it overwrote that keyframe. So now that the ro now the rotate value for Y is now 360 instead of that arbitrary random uh, thing. And notice if I if I rotate this now and then scrub the timeline, it will actually jump back to uh, where what the timeline uh, the keyframes have dictated. Um, once you've set keyframes on an object in a particular channel. If you scrub that timeline, it's going to jump back to wherever it is on the timeline and ignore whatever thing you've done to it. Okay, so quick and dirty. We have now animated a spinning gear. Uh, remember, the, the assignment is to make three spinning gears. To make three spinning gears spinning at different speeds. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you the absolute quick quickest and dirtiest way. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna get you guys into infinity and looping. Um, infinity and looping requires the graph editor, and since the graph editor is too scary for some people, I will just show you how to do this uh, without looping. Okay, so um, well, if we hit Control D, it's duplicate. Notice that. Uh, I, I have lost my animation. This this one, the channel box here is not lit up. There's no keyframes. When I hit Control D, I lose my animation. This one's this one's animated. This one is not. I lose the animation if I hit Control D. So that obviously isn't going to work. So let's go into Edit, Duplicate Special, and remember when we uh, first thing we do when we open this box, everyone should know by now is Edit Reset Settings because God only knows what I was doing with this dialog box last time I opened it and it does retain those values so edit reset settings a lot of people instinctively are gonna think oh you should probably use instance to keep the animation uh, intact 
Nope. Uh, I would have thought that as well, but it is not true. So it is duplicate input graph. And notice that all this other fun stuff goes away. Apparently, when you copy animation, you can't do any of this other fun stuff. Whatever. OK. So duplicate input graph. If I duplicate now, if I click Apply, now when I duplicate it, it retains the animation. And if I hit Play, ooh, ooh, I know what happened. If I, when I hit Play, it jumped back to where it was. Why is that? Um, that is because there are keyframes on the translate. There are keyframes on the translate, which means as soon as I scrub the timeline, no matter what I do, I can move this anywhere I want. As soon as I scrub the timeline, it's going to jump back because there's keyframes on the timeline dictating where it should be in space. So I guess the quick and dirty way is going to have to require a little bit of extra work. So quick and dirty to, to clean that up and make it make it able to move offset. Um, we're going to have to kill the keyframes on the translates. So I'm going to highlight all the translates, right click, uh, and delete selected. This takes me a minute to find it. There it goes. Delete selected. Now that I've killed the keyframes on the translates, uh, I can now be I'm now free to move this off of here. And now the key I didn't kill the keyframes on the rotates, which is where which is where it's spinning at. So now I can offset it, move it wherever I want, and it's still going to spin with the exact same animation that this does. All right. So um, S key again is your friend if you're just trying to throw down a bunch of animation, but it does add a lot of extra random uh, keyframes on stuff that you're not necessarily animating. So I personally avoid it. But quick and dirty. We now have two gears spinning. But remember, the other requirements of the assignment were to make them spin at different speeds. If you're trying to do quick and dirty and avoid the graph editor because it's scary, um, I would say do this. Shift, shift and left click and drag. Shift, left click and drag is going to create this little red uh, highlight indicator. Basically, you're using this little selection tool to select a keyframe or multiple keyframes. And in this case, let's just select it and then, then click on the middle arrows to drag this keyframe left and right. Now, with those keyframes drag, drag, uh, dragged over here, notice that the keyframe on this object is over, is over at six, frame 60. The keyframe on this object is now at, at, at the, uh, well, I don't know, what 38. So uh, with that keyframe scooted closer, remember, anytime you scoot keyframes towards each other on the timeline, it's going to speed things up. If you, if you scoot keyframes away from each other on the timeline, it's going to slow things down. Now if I hit play, this one moves faster than that one. So we have two, now we have two gears spinning at different speeds. This one also seems to have some funky interpolation going on, um, but whatever. It, it works. And as far as getting a C on the assignment, I would take it. Um, doesn't matter as long as they're doing different things and you've messed with keyframes. Okay, so now we've got that. Um, how about this one? Uh, let's 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 go back to this one. Duplicate it again. Remember, edit, duplicate special option box. Hit apply. Scoot this over. Close the window. Now we have three gears and they should all be spinning. Oops, and once again, I have to delete those translate values uh, in order to get it to stop from snapping over there. All right, let me just move this over and then go back into this channel box, right click, delete selected, clean out the keyframes on it. Bam, now we have three gears. These two are still identical though. These, t these two are still spinning identically. Well, we can, uh, we can do all kinds of stuff to adjust this. Uh, let's, just, let's just change the speed first of all uh, and again shift left click highlight highlight this keyframe and then I'm going to click and drag until that keyframe scoots way away if I again if I'm scooting this keyframe away from this keyframe uh, then that is going to slow down the animation so now we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have once it loops back we're gonna have a fast one a slow one and a medium one There we go. Um, that is basically jobs done for uh, for this assignment for a C. If you want a C, that is how you could get a C really quickly in like five minutes.
there he goes. All right, again, I, I won't get into looping. I'll get into looping on the, uh, the next video because um, that requires the graph editor, which is a little bit scarier and more complex for some people. So there it is, S key. And remember, uh, I, I made you guys repeat this in class over and over. If you're if you're in my online class, or I mean my uh, on-campus class, I made you repeat it again and again. It is you set a keyframe, change the time slider, uh, change the object somehow. Let's say moving it. Set a keyframe, change the time slider, change the object. Set a keyframe, change the time slider, change the object. Set a keyframe. Change the time slider, change the object, set a keyframe. That is how you animate the quick and dirty way. Now things move. Um, that is the essence of animation. Set a keyframe, change the time slider, change the object. Set a keyframe, change the time slider, change the object. Again, in class, I made you guys repeat that over and over and over and over and over because that is the essence of animation. And if you can do that, you can animate stuff. Maybe not super well, but it's the starting point to, to get you to make things bounce around. All right, that is it. Um, that is it for the quick and dirty. I will upload this as soon as possible so you guys can not panic and not have a video. Okay, thanks. Bye guys.